So the COVID-19 epidemic, we've got some new challenges when it comes to uh, aerosols and delivering uh, nebulized medication. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about aerosols and the PPE that we're using and why aren't we giving these nebs, right? So first of all, let's talk about the PPE. Uh, I have a couple masks here. I have surgical mask. First line of defense, okay? Not a great mask, okay? Better than nothing I've heard people say. The biggest thing with this, is air escapes okay plus this barrier isn't very uh very fine it doesn't protect a lot if anything it protects you from them okay so in that way it is better than nothing but if you're going to be dealing with n95 type patients you're going to need something stronger n95 mask okay so n95 mask your facility should fit test you make sure that you have it on properly you get a good seal and you have the right face for it okay a lot of these dudes are cutting their beards off now because it's not, they're getting that, getting a good seal. Okay. It's all about the good seal. Every mask is as good as its seal. Okay. And this will block most of everything you have that's out there. Okay. Not very comfortable. Okay. But safety first. Okay. And if you are taking care of these COVID-19 patients, make sure that you wear eye protection. Okay. Cause that droplet is going to hit your mucous membranes and you want to protect everything. Okay. And also, uh, gown up. Okay. So why aren't we giving these nebulized medications? Uh, COVID-19 is a droplet, it's not airborne, right? Well, that's true. However, when we give uh, our patients an aerosol, it becomes a delivery system for these uh, viruses. So let's, let's talk about how this happens. So we have an aerosol, and we're gonna measure it in these, the molecules in microns. So, uh, Aerosol is pretty large, five microns. And you can see it, the human eye could see it, it's probably that large size. Uh, microscopic, uh, you're not going to be able to see them with the human eye. The coronavirus is actually pretty tiny. It's 0 0.1 microns. And that's actually rounding up, it's actually a little smaller than that, okay? so. The aerosol becomes a delivery system for these viruses. Okay, so here's our aerosol molecule, and here's our COVID. And so what could happen is this aerosol could carry a bunch of these viruses as a suspension in the air and carry it for uh, some studies have said 30 minutes. Okay, so it becomes a delivery system and it makes it an airborne threat. Okay, so here we have an array of different type of uh, nebulizer and, and aerosols and things like that. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to deliver this safely. First of all, let's talk about, let's go over uh, some aerosol delivery systems. These are standard neb. And why this is dangerous to get for these type of patients is because we have our nebulizer. delivery system. We're puffing on this. We have a reservoir tubing and it's giving us uh, aerosol that's delivering whatever we're coughing out. Okay. See how that's working? So everything is kind of delivering from those big microns that's carrying those bacteria out. So that's why NEBS are, are not being used right now because of that factor. Um, there are different types of NEBS that are made to um, filter. Like for this one, this is a special NEB that's made for uh, delivering um, anti, antibacterial medicines, things like that, that they, we don't want to pump into the air. It's not made for COVID, uh, but this does exist. And the way that this works, it has a one-way valve in here, okay, which basically lets you inhale, and I'm exhaling through the filter. See the TPs? Now, is this safe enough for the COVID-19 patients? Um, the, CDC is, the CDC says no, no aerosols, okay? 
this does exist though and is, as we know more we may have uh, things like this where we'll uh, deliver medications this way but for now it's just uh, inhalers and MDIs okay it's to be safe because this does create an aerosol even though it's protected <laughs> they can still cough and, and expel these type of uh, uh, things in the air okay so this one they exist also another one this is called uh, an aerogen and this is used for a lot of to ventilators and and bypass it's very cool and it has vibrate vibrating mesh technology okay so it actually makes the nib into a vapor you see that how we have this vapor okay now if we're inhaling this The droplets are a little bit smaller, but they could still carry, okay? And usually this is placed in line, okay? okay it's in line tubing, like this for the ventilator, okay? Uh, and it, it'll give you a nev, a nev inside a ventilator or a BiPAP, but it also could be used with a mask, things like that, okay? Um, and Aerogen says it's safer. However, we don't know yet, okay? So we're still not giving uh, nebulized medications, but know that's out there and that might be an option. Okay. Another thing that may be an option is this. It's called the breath actuated nebulizer. Okay. And the way that this works is it's the same principle, although the medication is on demand. It doesn't come out until you inhale it, okay? So it's a little bit safer. It's a little bit more like an inhaler. The problem is they still have to expel this. <laughs> okay? So I'm showing you all these things just to know they exist. But uh, right now we're not using nebula. We're not using nebs, okay? We're using uh, uh, meter dose inhalers, uh, DPS, which are dry powder inhalers. We're using those things right now for uh, these COVID-19 patients, okay? Uh, so if you do have, or you de deliver these, you want to use a spacer. Here's our medication, okay? Shake it. Uh, with an MDI, you want to make sure that it's given nice and slow, okay? And that's what the spacer does, okay? You don't have to time this. Okay, there's a one-way valve in there. The medication will actually stay in here. Shake it. Give it a puff. Let them breathe out. Nice and slow, okay? If they do it too hard, that's called a warning whistle, and that's not good, so we don't want that, okay? So uh, make sure that they're doing it nice and slow. If you're giving a dry powder inhaler, which is like the Advair where they cr it crushes this pill and they inhale dust, they actually have to do that uh, they have to uh, inhale it really hard as opposed to uh, this type of aerosol, okay? Uh, in the field, um, you may not have these, okay? If you're, if you're a um, medic or a transport nurse, you may not have uh, these type of things, but you could make your own, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to do it with uh, neb uh, regular nebulizer and things that you have on your, um, Great. So what we have here is we have a regular nebulized kit. Okay. We have a uh, aerosol mask. Make sure it has these holes in it. Okay. We're not going to take apart none of breather and use that because we want to uh, make this a we want to make a complete seal here. And then we have our um, meter dose inhaler. Okay. And we also have electrodes. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to construct our own uh, spacer with what we have. Okay. So I'm going to take our neb, neb kit and I'm going to take off the tubing, the reservoir tubing. I'm going to connect it to the mask. Just like so. Okay. Our MDI should fit tightly inside. It has a good, nice, tight fit there. With our electrodes, we're going to put them to seal these holes. Electrodes are the best because there's nothing stickier, right? And it's gonna get a good, it's gonna get a great seal. It's 
So there you have it, you have this. And so we put this on our patient, okay? And we'll use this to deliver the medication, get a nice tight seal, clamp it, and then we'll deliver that medication, okay? If there weren't a nasal cannula, you could put it under it, okay? But you'll take this off with the medication. All right, well, thank you for watching. Be safe out there.